hello. So this is my diagram of the lungs. It does work. <laughs> so the inside, the two balloons inside indicate the left and right lungs and the two straws are the bronchi which are the air shuttle to and from the lungs. I'm going to start by describing the process of inhalation and exhalation. So inhalation, when we breathe air in, our lungs expand as you can see there. And as they expand, our diaphragm, which is this yellow piece right here, will contract downwards. And that just allows for room when the lungs expand. And then um, as we exhale, when we're pushing all the air out, um, our lungs will deflate. And as they deflate, again, the diaphragm will contract inward and that just helps push the, um, the lungs so it could push out air. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Um, so some people, depending on the structures of their body, will have different lung capacities. Some will have larger and some will be some will have smaller lung capacities. And that just is based on the chest size, their chest um, their chest cavity size, um, the strength of their diaphragm muscles and how it, because it is an accessory muscle for the respiratory system, so the strength of it actually help, could actually determine um, the lung, helps determine the lung capacity and um, their actual lung size also. So now I'm going to describe how asthma affects the lungs. Um, as we know from module one, um, we covered asthma and it is a chronic inflammatory disorder that primarily affects the lungs by um, um, bronchospasming, bronco um, constricting when certain irritants and allergens are inhaled um, that will also transcend to the inflammatory process from kickstarting. Um, therefore, the clinical manifestations include shortness of breath, wheezing, a cough, chest tightness, and production of mucus. So, um, as nurses, we are um, always looking for um, nursing priorities and nursing management when it comes to our asthma patients. So, priorities for asthma include clearing the airway as soon as possible. This can be done by um, implementing oxygen administra administration, frequent rest periods, and the use of medications. Now let's talk about these medications because they actually um, are very, very important. So there are a few different medications that are associated with asthma. The first medication is called short-acting beta blockers, such as albuterol. This will dilate the bronchioles and promote a rapid relief, and it is used for um, in the event of an asthma attack. So it will, um, so pretend this diagram is having an asthma attack. The, bron the bronchioles will, is vasoconstricting. So when, um, when the patient inhales um, their arbuterol medication from their inhaler, it will dilate them and it will help um, promote airflow. And again, that is used for a rapid relief during an asthma attack. Long-acting beta blockers are used as a management of asthma, and it is typically used twice a day for long-term use. So it's not used for rapid, it's used for long-term to help manage the symptoms in order to decrease asthma exacerbations. exacerbations. So um, other medications include corticosteroids, and they help to um, calm the inflamed areas of the lungs. Nurses will also reduce stimuli external stimuli to decrease stress and calm the patient because stress is known to heighten the possibility of asthma attack. So another question is what would be important to teach the patient with asthma? So well it's one of the priorities is to identify and avoid the specific allergen or irritants that that individual is um, sensitive to. So those may include smoke, pollen, dust, perfume scents, um, things like that. 
Also, we want to um, educate them to perform pursed lip breathing before, during, and after an activity in order to help control their breathing. And then it's also important to check their peak flow meter to identify narrowing of airways. And that just helps, that is a big indicator if there is going to be an asthma um, attack coming in. And um, the order of medications to use when they're having an asthma attack is important as well. Um, first, the, the airways need to dilate um, in order for you know, effective clearance for other medications to, um, to put in effect. So lastly, I want to um, leave off with community resources that are available with clients, um, to clients with asthma. So the CDC actually um, has a list of various agencies that work towards spreading awareness on asthma and the effects it has on individuals. So certain resources provide information on how to keep the environment clean to, um, again, decrease pollen and um, environmental dust, environmental toxins that can um, put effect on people that has asthma. And also, um, there are additional research on how to manage asthma. And um, like I mentioned, the CDC has um, is constantly uploading recent and latest studies that help individuals manage their asthma. Um, and lastly, um, an asthma action plan is necessary to have it should be implemented right away for people who have asthma. So that includes my um, my diagram of the lungs and my explanation of how asthma affects the respiratory system.